Welcome to this week's edition of The Airdale. I'm Chloe Lewis. And I'm Shelby Bishop. Today we will be covering prom, the mask mandate being lifted, safe driving, and much, much more coming up on The The Airdale. Directly from the Alma High School News Studio, covering news and sports from where it matters. You're watching The Air Day. With dance show coming up this weekend at the Alma Performing Arts Center, May 1st and May 2nd, Evan Sanderson and Josh Wagley took a look at what preparations were taken to get the show up and running. Dance show is an exciting time for those who are part of the performance and those watching. This is how they prepare for their shows. So uh, the dancers have been preparing all year for dance shows, so in the fall we'll learn all of our technique and things like that. We do different combos for different um, styles so that we can figure out which ones the classes look best doing, like jazz or hip-hop or contemporary or whichever ones. Um, And so the classes are actually preparing all year long getting ready for that stuff. Um, And then they have started choreography, yeah, they've started choreography, so the intermediate advanced kids actually choreograph a routine in the show. And then the beginning kids kind of help with choreography and tricks and things like that. So it's a it's really a group effort as far as all the choreography and stuff to come up with everything that we have for the show. Dance started their preparations in February by choosing the songs they wanted to use and began their choreography. Students trained for spring performance by learning a variety of routines that are intriguing for the audience to watch. Dance here at Dahoma High School is a program you can take freshman year through through senior year. It's one of those classes you can Helps you get more flexibility. Do our conditioning days we do. We also do stretches, learn new combos, which is some of the fun stuff we do. One of the most challenging parts about being in dance is making sure you have the right clothes for dance, making sure you have clothes you can dance in, and thing. I think some advantages in being in dance is that you learn how to work in a huge group and you have that bond with your other dancers and just getting to spend time with them. Um, Just being a part of the Alma Dance program itself is a huge advantage. You can use it later in life if you plan on moving forward in a dance career. And I do believe that a majority of the people that are part of the dance team will move forward into a dance career. One of the things I'm mainly excited for is see all these lower classmen who haven't done dance show before and see their reactions to all the flushing lights that goes on, the music and everything. Well, when I prepare for a dance show, I normally have a tradition that I do each year. Um, we all gather in the pack and have our little moment together and leading up to dance show, how we prepare leading up to it is multiple practices, always putting in your 100% effort, even on your bad days. The Alma Dance Program is an amazing group and we are a family. We are all so very involved and excited for this year's show. For preparation for our dance show this year, we have been getting ready to do our practices and everything in, in class outside of school. Like next week, all boys, we start our practices at, the, at 9 a.m. in the high school. Then for our class routines, we did our class periods that we have during the day. The boys' dance team see it as a way to relieve stress, have fun, and skip class. Some dance students have traditions they like to do. What I'm most excited about for dance show this year, I would have to say, is the theme, which has not yet been released. Um, I am incredibly excited about it because it's new. Every year there's a new theme and we come back bigger and better than ever. The things that I like about dance are how I get to spend so much time with my friends and just enjoy life. Um, It's kind of just something that's my freedom. It's something I do in my free time and I thoroughly enjoy that. Dance show is an incredible sight to see for anyone that enjoys artistic performances. For Airways Media, I am Joshua Wagley. With baseball season almost over, Xander Polito and Justice Robertson has an update on how our Airedales are doing. This is just a little update on the Airedale Baseball 2021 season. 
In the past few years, they had great players and great coaches, but didn't do that well. This year, they have been doing better than last year. We asked Josh Driscoll about his thoughts on this year's season. Man, baseball's been exciting this year. Uh, just getting the opportunity to get back out on the field after uh, what our young men went through last year with the COVID. Um, only getting to play four games, uh, having the opportunity to go to Texas, get to play into two games there, and then find out that everything's fixing to be shut down and having to come home knowing, you know, especially for our seniors, knowing that they weren't going to get to finish out their senior year working so hard up to this point. But it's exciting to see the kids, uh, the effort, the work that they're putting into it, and actually getting to play and actually have a season this year has been great. It's going a lot better um, than what it has in the past. Um, been very proud of our guys. Uh, been proud of the work ethic. Uh, been proud how they have competed in each game. Uh, right now, uh, you know, we've won uh, five games. Uh, you know, losing right now. I think we're at uh, eight, eight or nine games right now. Uh, but uh, you know, just the way they compete and the way they fight through each game, uh, it's been exciting to see. Exciting to see what is coming up in the future as well. Um, to uh, see how our baseball program is improving each year and um, pretty excited about what's going on. We asked Driscoll what they are doing this year compared to last year. Driscoll also explains what the coaches and the players are doing this year that is helping them get better and have more fun playing the sport as well. Uh, just you can tell by practice uh, that our players are having more fun in practice as well as working, uh, learning, uh, going through situations. Uh, I feel like this group of seniors as well, well, this group of baseball players get along pretty good um, while we're out there on the practice field, um, actually and during the game, being encouraging. Um, something that happened uh, the other night, uh, you know, when our guys apologized for getting them out in a, in a double play situation, like, hey, sorry I put you in that situation. You know, you don't hear that very often from guys. The encouragement in the dugout, you know, trying to cheer each other on. And, you know, coming up with sayings, trying to make each other laugh. You know, we had a guy that had a, a fat head, you know, the other night uh, about there just being encouragement, just showing that, just trying to have the kids laugh and fun, but as well as competing at the same time. So it's been a great group uh, to be around, um, great group to be able to coach, uh, to be able to, you know, build relationships with and those kinds of things. The Airedale baseball season only has a month left, but plenty more games to play. They at least play two games a week or more. Sometimes the varsity has double header. The baseball team is becoming closer to each other. They tell each other jokes and find different ways to laugh and enjoy the game. For Aries Media, this is Justice Robertson. Thank you. I wonder who has better taste in music, girls or boys? Most definitely girls. Yeah, that's what I think too. Lincoln Medlock has the inside scoop. Many people listen to music, but there has always been a lifelong question of who has the better taste in music. So, who do you think has a better taste in music? Men or women? I think I would say women have better taste in music than men. <laughs> uh, men. Women, for sure. Music. Men, men, men for sure. Men. Men. What do you think the most popular genre of music is? Mm, taste of music would be pop or just soundtracks to movies. Rock. Country. Um, hip hop, anything besides like new country. Alternative rock. Uh, rap, the baby. This is Lincoln Medlock from Airways Media, still looking for interviews. Our maintenance crew works so hard behind the scenes, and we are so thankful for them. Christian Stubbs has more on recognizing our maintenance crew. Janitors are the backbone of the school. They are important to the school just by the things they do. There are a lot of things that go unnoticed that are done by the janitors. Janitors tend to take a lot of pride, and some even wake up much earlier than others. When you guys are asleep, I get up at 3 in the morning, I hit the floor at 4 a.m., I either go to the primary school or the middle school, depending on which day of the week. I have a buffing machine. I sometimes go in, I dust mop, I scrub the floors, and then I shine them up real nicely. So this way, when the kids come into the school buildings, they have a nice, beautiful facility, nice and shiny. And it, I guess it goes a long ways as far as their productivity goes for the day. What I enjoy about Alma School District that I see a lot is 
the, um, the love that goes around as far as um, the kids, everybody is involved and it's, it's all about the kids. I, and I love that, I, I can see it and it's, it's a beautiful thing. My philosophy is in any kind of work field that you do, if you're gonna do something, if you're gonna do any job, anything that you do, do it with, um, with pride, um, be good at whatever it is you do. Because if you're not good at it, then you shouldn't be doing it. As you heard from Mr. Ortiz, if you were going to do anything, do it right. A lot of things. I mean, every little fingerprint you leave anywhere, we always make sure it's gone. You know, you want everybody healthy as well. So we make sure that we disinfect things for you guys to use on a daily basis. If you see a janitor today, be sure you tell them thank you because it means a lot more to them than you would think. This is Christian Stubbs of Airways Media signing off. With the start of May right around the corner, that means prom season is in full swing. Stephen Miller has more. Due to COVID, the 2020 Alma High School prom was canceled. As COVID has continued, we thought we weren't going to have a prom for 2021. But due to new regulations on COVID, we will have a 2021 prom. Here's Mr. Kirkendall on the subject. Oh, here's, here's the best news of all. We're going to be able to have prom. We're going to have prom on May the 8th. It's from 8 to 11 here on the high school campus at Crabtree. As of right now, um, not a whole lot of restrictions in place. Uh, there, there, we still have some things we have to, we have to adhere to. As of today, we're, we were, you know, we recently removed the mask mandate. So, Mask will be optional. You do not have to wear them. We encourage you to wear them, but they're not required. Um, we're still gonna we're gonna try to space some of the the tables and stuff apart. To do some kind of social distancing. Obviously, if you're gonna have a prom, you can't do it the way that it has been done in the past as far as social distancing is concerned. There are some thoughts coming out of the Capitol that in Arkansas Capitol that is that maybe the emergency declaration will be ended by them, which gives us even more freedoms. Uh, we don't know that. Every student that's uh, a junior or a senior can bring one guest as long as they're under the age of 20. Uh, so for example, if you have a boyfriend or girlfriend and they do not attend Alma High School, you can still bring them. Usually our numbers are really small in that area. And also, if they, don't, uh, if they just happen to go to school out of, out of, even out of state or somewhere far away, I mean, you can bring them as a date, uh, but you can bring one. So tickets are going to be $15. We'll sell those a couple days in advance before prom on May the 8th, and we're looking forward to it. I'm Stephen Miller with Airways Media signing out. People put themselves in public's eyes. That sometimes has a negative effect by publicly dismissing their careers until they made right in society's eyes. Michael Farrell has more. Cancel culture can destroy careers out of something that could have easily been handled in private. There are just too many examples of this that have resulted in a content creator's career being ruined. Um, honestly, I think that it can be a bad thing and it can be a good thing, right? Because you know, some people, they deserve to be canceled, you know, because they've done some really bad things. But other people, they kind of get the bad front of it, you know, because they didn't do anything, but they still get canceled. And that's kind of messed up. If you don't know what cancel culture is, it's the idea of when a person does something bad or has in the past to cancel them, which means to stop watching or consuming their content publicly. When a person gets canceled, their career is basically lost until they make a good response. Depends on if they did something bad or not, you know, because if they deserved it, then I think they should definitely just, you know, kind of take it and, you know, live with it. But if someone didn't deserve it, you know, they should have a community that supports them. With the ability to ruin a person's career from canceling them, that power is sadly often abused. As an example, a few weeks ago, Technoblade, a popular Minecraft PvP YouTuber, deliberately had his content shifted through to find anything bad leading to people finding a satire joke and then abusing that control. This led him to private a lot of videos in his back catalog. It's, I think it's more negative than positive because there's many people that cancel YouTubers for like things they've done like 10, 20 years ago. And it's like something little that like they say is something right and, and they get canceled and lose a lot of money from it. This has been Michael Farrell with Arrows Media, signing out. 
Kids grow up and with that comes responsibility and that means driving. Andrew Conister has more about safe driving. Nearly 20% of vehicle accidents happen in the parking lot. These accidents cause an average of 60,000 injuries and 500 fatalities per year. So, needless to say, when you are in a parking lot, you need to be cautious, especially at heavily active times of the day. You need to keep your speed under 10 miles per hour. Don't make sharp sudden turns or maneuvers as this could surprise someone and cause an accident. And be sure to drive up and down the aisles instead of cutting through parking rows. Always look before you turn and be aware of your surroundings. When you park, be sure you are only taking up one parking space. These are all some easy guidelines to keep the parking lot safe. This is Andrew Cronister with Airwaves Media. Thank you for watching. You always remember your first car. Bobby Taylor has more. With students coming of age to drive, they wonder what they're going to drive or what to look for in a first time driver's vehicle. Uh, my, I would say that the best type of car to get for a first time driver uh, would be something that is um, a couple years older, uh, not brand new, because then um, teenage drivers have a chance, a higher chance of getting in a wreck than any other drivers because they're first starting out. So you don't want a brand new car that you have a possibility of wrecking. And so I would I would recommend uh, getting something a couple years older and maybe something that's smaller and easier to handle while driving. When looking for a vehicle for a first time driver, it's important to make sure it is safe for them to drive. SUVs. I'd say a first time driver, um, probably not the best driver. Maybe getting some accidents, so you might want to get something that's going to be safe. Um, after that, I'd start looking for something that's that's gets going to get good gas mileage, good for the environment, but also good gas mileage, so you don't have to be gassing up all the time. SUVs is one of the safest vehicles to drive, along with small trucks and cars for first-time drivers. Like safety, I'm I'm going to point towards safety. So SUVs are pretty safe, generally speaking. Trucks are pretty safe. Um, so either those would be a good choice. Gas mileage though, probably not the best. Um, so you just gotta have to find that right balance for what your needs are and your, what you can do, what you can afford. Being on the driver and the parents, they can choose their first car as, an, as a reward for it. Things like good grades, staying out of trouble, or perfect attendance. To pick what vehicle I wanted, um, because it was kind of a kind of part of my reward for having good grades all the way through school. My parents told me that I could pick up my vehicle, and um, so I chose to get a Chevrolet truck, and uh, I just really liked it. And we found it on the lot, and I kind of fell in love with it. Face Media. This is Bobby Taylor drifting to finding a first car. Social media is an incredible tool that many people throughout the world use, yet sometimes the negative effects become a harsh reality. Gene Alexander took an in-depth look at the effects of social media. Social media is one of the most common forms of communication, and it's growing very quickly. It changes and affects others in different ways. For example, some people say that social media is good because it allows you to stay in touch with friends and family, but others say that social media is bad because it also allows people to bully and ridicule others for a multitude of reasons, like their race, religion, sexuality, and many more. Well, I think it's positive to, unless you use it too much, because if you use it too much, you can't ever get off of it. Um, let's say if you use it all the time, you're not going to have enough time to spend with your family or your friends. And you'll just be stuck on your phone all the time. There are a multitude of positive effects that social media has on others, but at the same time, there are as many negative effects, if not more. Having a good attitude on social media can help decrease the number of cyberbullying incidents. This is Gene Alexander with Airways Media, logging off. With April coming to a close, that means that the ACT Aspire testing is almost over. Ethan Waits and Damian Hallmark took a look at ACT Aspire testing. With standardized testing coming up, here is Ms. Reese to answer some questions you may have about the ACT. The ACT and the ACT Aspire are made by the same company, but they're two completely different tests. 
Okay, so the ACT, that's just ACT by itself, that is a national test that you take. It's like a college entrance exam, okay? And that tells you how ready you are for college or past ready you are for college. And that's the one that you hear that people are excited if they get a 32 on or maybe they're at a 17 and they have some more work to do. So that's the ACT. Um, you want to get a 19 or higher that's your first goal because that gets you out of college remediation classes. That gets you eligible for a whole lot of things on the ACT. Okay, so the ACT and the SAT are the two main um, college placement or college entrance exams. Okay, the ACT Aspire that is it is a national test, but it's not used as nationally for the same thing. Okay, so that is grades starts in grades three and then ends in grades. 10. So every student in Arkansas, third grade through 10th grade, takes the ACT Aspire in the spring. Um, you might have taken some ACT Aspire interim test in your middle school years. Um, you might have taken some classroom tests. Those are like periodic throughout the year. The big one at the end in April is called the summative test. And that helps us see what all you've learned in that year, okay? Um, once you get to your early high school years, which is ninth and 10th grade, that's what we test here, that will give you an ACT predictor score. And that tells you what you should get on the ACT, okay? So they are related, but they're set up completely differently um, and they're used for two completely different things. Um, the ACT Aspire, you take it one time, for that grade or ninth grade and then 10th grade and then you're done with it. The ACT you can take as many times as you want to and keep improving your score. So the ACT Aspire that's like a glimpse into where you're at your ninth grade and 10th grade years. It's not the whole picture, doesn't paint everything for us, it tells you how you did on that one day. The ACT Aspire and the ACT are very important tests and to excel you must answer all of the questions to the best of your ability that year. So kindergarten through second grade, they do a different kind of test that's geared more for their younger minds. Third grade, third grade through eighth grade, they take a different test each year, okay? One that's appropriate for third grade standards, fourth grade standards, so that's set up differently each year. Ninth and tenth grade, you actually take the same test, different questions and stuff each year, but you take the same type of test your ninth grade and tenth grade year. Okay, um, so it just sees, it, it has what you're supposed to know during those years. Third graders are taking what they're supposed to take in third grade and see what, where they're at. Ninth and tenth grade, um, they do the exact same thing. So that lets teachers and schools know if they're teaching what they're supposed to teach, if the students are learning what they're supposed to learn, and it gives you good information on if your score is not where it should be, what we need to do differently. It gives us good feedback on um, where you missed, like what standards you missed, and what we can do differently moving forward to help you prepare to be so successful in your future years. On the first day of testing, ninth graders start testing on a Monday, sophomores test on a Thursday, okay, of April. April 12th is when freshmen start. You will take English, science, and writing on the first day, and then the second day on Tuesday, you'll take math and reading. And then we'll do remote students, and then we'll do sophomores on Thursday and Friday. So you'll take three tests, and then you'll take two tests the next day. Um, so that's how it's set up logistically, and then you know each, each session is set up differently, and you should be working in your classes to show you the format of how those individual classes or, or tests are set up, like what the science test looks like and stuff. With Airwaves Media, I'm Ethan Waits. Upperclassmen go through more than you know. Brianna Langston has more. Our old principal used to say, every day is a great day, and it's been long, and yeah. It's almost that time of the year again to say goodbye to our seniors. But first, let's see what they have to say about their senior year, considering the fact that this whole school year has been crazy. Uh, freshman year, I failed a few classes, but then, you know, I realized that I need to do better, so now I have a honor roll. If you ask any senior about how their year was, they would tell you it's been good or they hated it and how they wish it was different or 
they're glad their school year for them is over. And for some of the students, it's them going straight into college or straight into the military or doing their dream job. This is Brianna Langston with Airways Media. With COVID numbers decreasing, the governor of Arkansas has lifted the mask mandate. Evan Shibley has more. Throughout the school year, students have been required to wear masks per mandate by the state of Arkansas. However, during his weekly conference on March 30th, Governor Hutchison lifted many of the mask mandates. Businesses are allowed to make their own decision whether or not to wear masks in their stores. And the same goes for schools. Alma School District has opted to allow students and faculty the option to wear masks as opposed to require them. This is a decision that came easily to the Alma School District as they wanted to follow safety guidelines according to the Arkansas Health Department. If that's what the health department said was the right thing to do, then that's what we were going to do. Just because we no longer have a mask requirement in school doesn't mean that we are out of the COVID era yet. Alma schools are still following all of their guidelines recommended. So we all need to be sure that we're continuing to wash our hands uh, and, keep, and the main two things, wash our hands and keep social distancing. It is also recommended that you keep a mask on on you at all times if you cannot be within three feet of anyone. If you feel the need to wear a mask, then by all means do so. Just continue to be safe, mask or no mask. This is Evan Shibley with Airwaves Media. We would like to take a minute to recognize Alma Chair for being first at Nationals and Alma Dance Team for placing fifth in Nationals as well as Miss Siler for Teacher of the Year and Shivam Raja for being an ICDC finalist. Thanks for watching this week's edition of the Airdome. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. And follow all of our social medias at Airwaves Media. And as always, by the wise words of T-Mac, go, go Airdomes! Airdomes.